You also, before you went into Parliament and since, have been a, a, a fairly outspoken champion of the Palestinian cause. So um, I wonder whether you've had the chance yet to cast an eye over Jared Kushner's solution to the thorniest problem in world politics. I mean, I'm horrified by it, to be honest. I'm horrified by it because I've spent seven years as the vice chair and then chair of Labour Friends of Palestine in the Middle East trying watching the situation get worse for the Palestinian people and what this does is potentially close off any prospect of a two-state solution and that is devastating for Israel as well and the reckless way in which this administration has approached this issue this has surely got to be the time when the UK government finally finds its teeth and stands up and says enough is enough I mean I saw a comment from Dominic Raab this morning where he suggested that this was an interesting plan that needed to be taken seriously that is disgraceful as the uk government we have a history in the middle east we had we had a role to play in creating these problems in the first place and to not stand up now when we can see the implications of what the trump administration is doing is really really disgraceful britain has got to find its voice again staying um allied to matters middle eastern you blamed a failure of leadership for the party's crisis over anti-semitism you, you know that a lot of the votes you're seeking are in the pockets of people who still insist that there was no crisis of anti-semitism mm. my, my um social media is full of people claiming it was smears it was media bias there was never any anti-semitism it was it, it, it was used as a stick with which to beat the dear leader and there was no evidence whatsoever for it and then i bumped into luciana burger the other day at yeah. the amfram trust lunch and i mean even the most cursory glance of what she went through makes a complete mockery of these claims and yet still they come yeah, so I'm not seeking the votes of people who think that there was no problem with anti-Semitism because there was, and I spoke out about this when I was in the Shadow Cabinet. It was the only time I broke the collective line because I considered that not to do so would have made me complicit in it. I, I suppose what I would say is this, is that for a lot of our members it's very unless they're online and on on yeah. social media they may never have seen incidents of anti-semitism in the labor party and that is because my members have gone out and fought racism over and over again over recent decades but we allowed a series of very high profile incidents of anti-semitism to go unchallenged and unaddressed and by doing so the leadership of the party collectively allowed a green light to go out to anti-semites so that they had a natural home in labor now that you know i've said that this is incredibly shameful and we should have been Why much more vocal it? and we should have we should have dealt with it i don't know oh, it's come the on. Honest. you're a lot no, closer I, to the action than we are I, well, how, how, how did it happen I, I left the shadow cabinet in 2016 yes. I, I genuinely don't know what went wrong i've spoken to shadow cabinet members since who say they don't know why those cases were unaddressed whether it was willful or whether it was chaos I have no idea, but what I do know is the damage that has done will last with Labour for a very long time. And you mentioned Luciana. I have other friends, Ruth Smith yes. and Louise Elman, who were dealing with this at the time. And I remember sitting in the committee room where they were begging the leadership of the party to adopt an internationally recognised definition of anti-Semitism and looking up at the shadow cabinet and seeing people sitting there while they told Jewish Labour MPs that the shadow cabinet knew better than they did about what constituted anti-Semitism. We should never be there again. And that, that that is why I've been so robust about it, because there is no alternative. The damage that we've done is enormous, not just to Jewish Labour members, but to Jewish people in this country. And we've got to own up to that and we've got to change.